simple stuff. He was the Kamaka family of the early 1900s. So he created the building. So when you take a four-story building, wood building, and you make it a two-story wood building over here, and by the way, it's already used so you can watch the stadium and the games, right? <laughs> the rumors were, coming to the story, they actually defeated the second story. So the Hawaiian people were saying, you know I get this wood for his people that it? Come from the second story. <laughs> so his son, and I got to talk to his son, Mr. Kumulai, uh, to the son By the way, the first Mr. Kumulai actually is an editor of my history. But his son says, you know, my dad never used the wood from that building. And the reason they say that is because the, you know, it's just one floor. But cannot, because we didn't use that kind of wood for the ukula. It makes sense. So I'm going to tell you about, before I end, I'll tell you about Mr. Kumulai, and then I'll tell you just a few things about what happened here. So Mr. Kumulai, I'm calling because I'm like, hey, this guy is still alive. He must be called. I think he's 100 years old already. I'm going to call, because in those days, you get the telephone book. So I'm like, okay, okay, I'll call. And the woman answers and so Aloha, he would have been a young young Mr. Kumulai. And she said, oh, she's giggling. And she said, um, I'm sorry, I don't speak Hawaiian. I said, well, this is Mrs. Kumulai. She goes, yes, this is Mrs. Kumulai. I said, oh, I'm looking for Mrs. Kumulai. I understand the only said, she's a hundred years old. She's a hundred years old. And I'm looking for Hawaiian speakers to talk there. And she sees the giggle that she said, my husband doesn't speak Hawaiian. His father did very well. But um, he's not he's not here right now. He's actually out in the yard doing yard work. <laughs> you call back at this certain time and you can talk to Mr. Kumulai. Okay. So where are you, Mr. Kumulai? Your voice sounds really strong. You can't be hundred years old like this. I mean, and she laughed again. She gave me Well, I'm actually old in the time. Well, anyway, that's my meeting with Mr. Mrs. Kumulai with the phone. But I will tell you, this is a fantastic space. So one group that's been here is uh, Education Incubator and Hong Kong China. Now, Road Shop, it's, it's awesome, it's, it is what it is, it is what it says, allows the Hongmana to dream big and think about what it would take for me to get to the goal. In other words, to achieve my goals, my desires. So we have setups here. The Hongmana can work up here upstairs. They have a learning center, of course, 3D printer. We have a lot of equipment for them to use. We have one of only a few cyber canoes. I'm not trained on it, so I was telling them I'm going to turn it on because the rule is you're going to be trained on it to turn it on. So, anyway, um, it's one of only four on the island of Oahu, Oahu. And we're very fortunate that we have one. Unfortunately, it's not used as much as we'd like it to be for its pur purpose, which is to be able to engage. So, we could have somebody from England over there, someone from Kalifu over there, all coming in at the same time to have a conference with us. That's probably his prime. People like to use it for PowerPoints and that's what it is for. But this is a great opportunity for Hawana to come to learn. We have a lot of Hawana. There's Roosevelt is here, University Lab, a lot of Hawana, Anu Inoue, um, and maybe not as frequently for Anu Inoue. But I will tell you this, Roosevelt students have come here and we've actually seen graduation rates increase for Native Hawaiians. Why Roosevelt? Well, it's the highest um, population of Native Hawaiians in the public school in my region next to Halal Kumana and Nanuwe. So, I need to, yes, there are only 15% of the native point there, but everywhere else is like 10, 11, 5, and then other schools. So, we've been working with the native point students, plus the principal, I shouldn't say that, somebody was able to call all the Hawaiians, because you can't do that in public schools in here, under this program. And I'll tell you this, we have three Hawaiians, Hawaiian students that we're not going to get into. We're not, not, not going to get into. We hooked them up. One was with a program we did in Shaman up here called uh, I Am a Scientist. And that girl turned around, she's the best student I've ever had. She graduated. Two others were not going to graduate. So I count. Two million. Three people is important. Three people are important. Why? Because Princess Paul, he was one person. And if it wasn't for this one person, all of the blessings we have, including the Kalao, and everything else, would not exist. So for me, every person is important. So we're happy that you're here. Uh, I'll be here till the end. Let's see if you have any questions. Let me know. Thank you for using this place. I'm happy that you are. And we're going to actually turn over the couple ship. Because right now we're manually doing it. We're not supposed to be supposed to let somebody else in. Right so uh, we're going to turn over the couple ship. Yeah, we're going to turn over the couple ship. Let's see if you have any questions. Let me know. Thank you for using this place. I'm happy that you are. And we're going to actually turn over the couple ship. Because right now we're manually doing it. We're not supposed to be supposed to let somebody else in. Right
they're going to come with quite a native plan nonprofit organization that they're going to come in, and they are all about education. So they're going to come in here and they're going to help. So you should always be able to think of folks, okay? We consider you folks partners. So get away from your, your areas and you usually need to be able to come here. The only problem is that you want to And I think it's open, okay. guys. Just keep the doors closed and stuff. All right? Any questions before I step down? Okay, I'll be here. Hello. Hello, hi everyone. So thanks everyone for coming. Um, and Makiki, if you guys can come a little closer when you guys are ready, so you can grab some of them on our own. I'm very honored to have uh, introduce our guest, our guest tonight, uh, Hina Wong. And some of you know her as Kuma Hina. She is a film producer, a poet, a musician, a composer, a hula dancer. Um, and an educator, um, a community organizer, an activist, and she's not going on it. Um, so, and she's not going on And so um, I'm very honored to know her, and I'm very happy she could be here tonight to share her name for a little bit of my own with us. Um, I've known her now for um, over 20 years now. And, um, Thirty. 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 I don't know. But uh, we, uh, I'm very honored that she's here with us. Uh, I mean, any of you have seen recently there was a uh, <coughs> that came out on uh, TV with her, her belly, which has become the animal for a long time. And that's a piece. So, oh, she can skin. She can skin. And really, I mean, wow. Malo, malo. Thank you. Malo, me. Ano ai ki aloha ia kakoa pauloa e na e ka papa makua o ke kula o hala o kumana. Aloha. Mahalo anui ia oe. E he ala ni wahine ko leo kono mai au e hele mai a e E ka ana kui ia mau mele no ki aloha aina. I am humbled and honored by your invite. And thank you for access into this audience, of which I have very particular and fond connection with. I spent 13 years at Halau Lokahi Public Charter School, and our school stood side by side at every rally in March and convening that we, we could attend. And we would always call each other. And we always knew we would look over to each other, Kumu Imai, look over to me, and I look over to Kumu Imai. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. And that meant that when well, we got it, it meant are we, are we ready to represent? Are we ready to, to put ourselves forward? Are we ready to be examples for our opio so that they can follow. And that is uh, my connection to you all. So I looked forward very eagerly to come here. Thank you for having me here. Mahalo also to Hailama for uh, the words of wisdom and insight into the history of this place. Hailama, Mr. Kumalai, um, my great-grandfather worked for Mr. Kumalai. And my grandmother, who raised me, accompanied, Mr. Kum um, accompanied her dad to do different things for Mr. Kumalai. And it was always spoken of uh, in this area, like you said. So when you mentioned that name, uh, I even have a family connection to... to the same story that you were recounting. Um, I want to say something about what Helani said to you all. And she told you a lot of stuff. Um, I know it came from a good place. But I wanted to say to you all that uh, the person Hina Lemoana is no different than each and every one of you sitting in this room. I just got lucky 
that I composed a song that was actually for Halau Lokahi students that the world has now come to know. Uh, the original um, disturbance of the groundbreaking ceremony for the 30 meter telescope, young protectors of the Mauna rallied themselves and galvanized and strengthened their minds and their hearts with this mele. And it is through their singing of it that I came to know that my mele went beyond Halau Lokahi. Uh, my son Hema and his wahine Ka'iulani are passing out uh, two sheets, one with mele kuha'aheo and one with awe. One with the latest composition, Eku Ulahui. Um, as Josh calls it, for the Lahui. Yeah. You can check out Josh Tatofi for, um, and he's posted it on YouTube. Just type in Josh Tatofi for the Lahui and you'll find it. <coughs> um. I'm going to ask you to uh, small kind redistribute yourselves. I would like Leo Kane come here this side close to me. Leo Wahine assembled this side. Mahalo. And Leo Kane, stay in one tight little cluster. Thank you. Mahalo. <clears throat> awesome. My Kai. I'm my Kai email. Mahalo. May I Kai Pepa? Yeah. Havi kai havi kai pepa ya kumu hai lama ke olu olu. O kumu hai lama heleo heleo mai kai ino kona na no no hi many many mai mai hope o wala na no hi many mai eh. And kumu hai lama I had the the privilege of attending Kamehameha with uh, with hai lama. Uh, what? Don't tell them I dented your car. <laughs> you know, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh. Uh, wait, there's two papers. Where's the other paper? Can I have that one, please? Mahalo. All right, mahalo. Oh, oh, wait. Eh. oh where's the other one? You get? Yeah, mom, yeah. Oh, oh, eh. Mahalo. Okay. Uh, I brought two mele tonight. One was so that you can make sure that you heard the explanation of mele kuha aheo from the horse itself. And then we can move on to um, for the lahui. Uh, oh, yes. But um, I did just want to say that thank you so much for that introduction that you gave but I, I especially to the young people in this room if you so apply yourself to whatever it is that your heart desires your parents and your family will have their aspirations for you you may find that it is in alignment with what you want you may find that maybe you want something different Tonight, Kumuhin is going to tell you for as much as you will follow your heart. See, I followed my heart. My family told me that they wanted me to study. They wanted me to learn. They wanted me to be an educated Hawaiian. But they wanted me to be an educated Hawaiian in most things that didn't necessarily focus on being Hawaiian. And I didn't like that idea. 
I was opposed to it because I was raised by my grandmother who comes from folks who are Aloha Aina patriots. So my grandmother's influence on my life made me an independent thinker. Let me invoke her name. Mona Kananio Kalani Ke Aloha. She, she lit the fire that became the pilot light. And that pilot light just kept going until it was time, until we went to school. And we had teachers like Haunani K. Trask and Lili Kala Kame Elehiva. And they liberated our minds and our souls. So for all of you parents in this room, I'm sure that your choice of school has already made you amenable to having children with liberated minds and hearts and spirits. But let me give you further reinforcement just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> just in case, because you know, our generation, yeah, because I'm I'm same generation as the parents in here, yeah? Mm. We can want everything that we want for our kids. But instead of encouraging them to pull to all the things that we think is best for them, let us simply encourage them to be as inclusive as they can. See, if I wasn't so po'opakiki, and if I wasn't the pailani, not just the puna hele child, I was the pailani child. Kumu hai lama, hea na o pailani. I pulole kela olelo. As the pailani child, I didn't ask for permission. I just said, I think I'm going to do this today. Um, Dad, can you take me? <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's the way of Pailani children. I just sort of say what I want. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, my point is, parents, let us get behind our children to be all that they can be in the world of the Kanaka, and for as much as we encourage them to expand beyond Kanaka, may they be able to expand. Because my family, most of my family, was opposed to me learning Kanaka things, Kanaka-based things, they said, oh, you should go learn Japanese, or you should go learn, take business, or you should go do this and that and this and that. And I said, oh, why do I want those things? I need to learn my culture, I need to learn my language. Ah, uh, but... If only I stopped for a minute to think how much more diverse I could be if I did all this and then that, how much stronger I would be. And then because you said, and Kumuhina, she's mahu, and then I would be a stronger mahu today. And then you watch out. <laughs> but um, I chose what I chose. And because I have a love and passion for our Olelo, our history, and for our culture, I was fortunate to write this song. And the first verse of Kuha Aheo, Eku Hawaii, it uses the metaphor of the ocean. Hehalakahua Olelo no ocean, Moana. It uses the metaphor of the earth. Hehalakahua Olelo no earth, for the world, Honua. Uh, and it uses the metaphor. Uh, for the sky and the heavens. Heakahua olelo no kela lani. Kamoana kahonua amekalani. And it says that the sea that Hawaii alights upon is raging, and the earth of Haumea shakes and shudders, and the highest of heavens above is rumbling. But that says to us in metaphor, that we are in turmoil, that we are, we are not in balance anymore. We are not living the balance that our kupuna had so successfully achieved. And this is problematic. And the first foreigners that came over here, some will view them as innocuous, some will view them as the antithesis to our people and our very existence because their presence in our lives 
marked the forever change that was about to come. Now I will stop and insert this at this current point that when we see the young uh, generation now, the 20-somethings to the 30-something-year-olds, they are the cumulative product of our generation. Kumu Lama, Helani, myself, Shane, any, any one of us who got into teaching, who got into promoting language, culture, and history, our cumulative band of Kumu and Makua produced the cumulative of this young generation that we see now. If you watch the movement to defend Mauna Kea and to prevent further development upon the Mauna, the primary leaders, forefront to the Lahui, are our young people. They are our products. They are being consistent with the lessons that we taught them. And I pulled my son over here to, um, to stay by me because he couldn't sing with me. And one day, he couldn't sing without me. Because that's what needs to happen. We need to train our young people to lead. We need to train our people to be able to drive our car and take us down the road and go take us to our appointment, drop us off, and come back when we tell them to come back and not to be late. <laughs> and when I say picking me up at 3 o'clock, do not have me waiting out there for half an hour because you went lalau someplace. <laughs> but we have to trust our children. If we cannot trust our children, then whose fault was that? Ours. If we cannot trust our children and say, hey, I trust you, take the car, go and come back. It's our fault. But we must take every opportunity we can. So in this song, the lessons are here and they're clear. The first verse is speaking in metaphor to all of the plethora of issues, socioeconomic and political issues that surround us today. But all I did was say, the sea is raging, the earth is, is um, rumbling, and the heavens are shuddering. What beautiful metaphor. Simple. In the second verse, Au hea vale o kopu aliko keave, me koka malala, valula, me kaku hi heva, alumai pu alumai me ko mano kalani po, ka imayana mena kama kahele lani. And although this is Hawaii centered, because Hawaii is my mainland. I hope Hawaii is your mainland too. Let's repeat that. This is a Haunani K moment. <laughs> Hawaii is my mainland. Hawaii is my mainland. Hawaii is my pico. If you understand that Hawaii is our mainland and our pico, then you understand and you shift your, especially for people my age or even older, and you shift what we were taught. When we are taught that some other faraway place is our mainland, then it doesn't become as relevant and, and as important for us what happens here. Because our minds and our alliances and allegiances are always thousands of miles away. And our value and our worth as people now becomes just part and parcel of a system that doesn't necessarily have us at the head or at the, the core, the heart of what happens. So again, that's the basis for this song. Um, calling to all the islands. Keave, when you hear Keave, what island are we talking about? Hawaii. Hawaii. When you hear Kamalala Valu, where are we referring to? Maui. Kakuhi Heva, O Ahune, Mano Kalanipo, Kauai. These are chiefly names that hold particular significance amongst our people. When we hear Kahelelani, Niihau. We all should know that. If you didn't know it before you came, now you do. 
a ole pilikia. One word at a time, one concept at a time. Makua, be not afraid of the knowledge that your children will come home with. Be not afraid of them possibly knowing and being able to teach you. Instead, be open and tell them, ask them, teach you. Everybody has to start someplace. Third verse, Pauku Ekolu, Im Enawe Mua Enapo Ki Aeinu, Wai Ava Ava, Evivo Ole Aho Okupa, A Ohehope Eho Imayai, Ana Ivale no Kako Kauko e Maui Kiala, Au E Kiala Ole Ak Malihini. So I took the words of Kamehameha, Imua Enapo Ki Aeinu Ikawai Ava Ava, A Ohehope Eho Imayai. Move forward, young. Brothers and sisters, move forward, young ones. When we say drink of the bitter waters, we, may, we mean engage life and accept life for all of the myriad and the plethora of challenges that come. Some will be great and some will not. You will experience trial, tribulation, and challenge, but you shall overcome. And I'll tell you where the, the verse that says we're going to overcome. Be fearless, vivo ole. Ho'okupa'a means to bite down and to keep your, keep your even keel and be vigilant and steadfast. Ho'okupa'a, be firm. Awe ke aloha ole akamalihini. For those not of uh, the, the unspoken metaphor for this line. Those not of Kanaka descent will be challenged to understand us. And when they are challenged to understand us, instead of following us, what might end up happening is that they'll put more of themselves and their worldview and their perspectives out there because that's what they know. That was the thinking when I wrote that line. It's not saying that, that they just didn't have a heart for us but they don't know how to share the heart that we have and they will never know unless we fortify ourselves. If we as Kanaka are not strong enough to assert ourselves in ways that we never have done before, which is exactly what we're seeing here. Culture has been appropriated. If, look at your shorts. What are those shorts? What is that supposed to represent? A Hawaiian flag. What does it say on your shirt? Hala Kumana. But does that make you more of a Hawaiian or more of a Kanaka? Not necessarily. What makes us Kanaka is how we think. What makes us Kanaka is what we understand and how we understand. So that way, when we wear these symbols on the outside, it is consistent with what is on the inside. We can wear shirts that have Pualoalo, that have the Kalo, that have some sort of other native motif, design. We can put flower on the head and wear lovely feathers about us. <laughs> we can do all of these things that are out, art, artificial and they're lovely and beautiful. We can have wonderful scarves draping off ourselves and flowing for yards and yards like Sister Havana, yeah, blowing in the wind. And now she's now she's uh, supported by Manaola to serve even more loveliness. <laughs> and you see Manaola flowing in the wind. There she goes. <sighs> That's okay. When age comes upon her, she may find herself more, more full-figured. <laughs> One day. <laughs> One day, yeah? Yeah, because I know several of you in this room, when we were a little bit younger, we were slimmer. <laughs> Svelte. All right, so back to the song. First verse, talking about the issues and the pilikia in the world, our world. The second verse, reaching out to our people and our community, saying, where is everybody? Come, come, come. The third verse says, what are we going to do? We have to go forward. And we have to be strong. And there's no turning back. And the third verse, that's the verse that invokes success. Why? Because we understand the olelo no eau. 
i ka olelo no keola, i ka olelo no ka make. In the word there is life, in the word there is death. So in the song, we're going to sing. E le mau i le mau ka ko e na ma mo aloha i le vehi a ali i vehi nani o ku aina hoi a mau hoi a mau no ka pono si i vila a ho i ho i ho i a mai ke ku o ko a. So I sang that verse for you. I didn't sing the others, but I sang that one because in this verse it says, "We let us wear, let us wear this lay, and may we always wear this lay." Beloved descendants, descendants of what? Descendants of this land, descendants of our heritage and culture. What kind of lay will we wear? We shall wear the adornment of Aali'i. Everybody here know what Aali'i looks like? You know what it feels like? She's not soft and tender. <laughs> She's not fragrant like, like this lei. She's rough and itchy and scratchy. She has pretty color, but her beauty is all its own. A rugged, natural looking beauty. <laughs> We tried and tried, but modern technology could not change certain <laughs> things, unfortunately. Ah, <sighs> oh way. That's that Aali. It's rough. It's rugged. Like my voice. Rough, rugged. Low. So, Leo Kane, you should have an easy time following my voice. <clears throat> um, it is the beautiful adornment of my land. Paddle, paddle, on, on, and on. Anybody here, um, hoi va'a, in their lifetime? The diamond head for days. Diamond head for days. Yes, yes. Long time ago, when we start out at Alamana Beach Park, and we go out to Honolulu Harbor, and then we go out to the natatorium, and then we come back, and then we go up the Alawai, and then we head back to Alamana Beach Park. <laughs> Oh. Yes, keep paddling. Mr. Scotty Wong in the room on, the, on our video, his brother was one of my, my best coaches I could ever have. He taught me how to persevere. He paddled his, um, his uh, what do you call those, kayak. He paddled his kayak next to our canoe, and he was always seemed to be right there next to my seat. And because our last name is Wong, come on, Wong, come on, Wong, the whole way. Get your hand up, Wong, reach out, Wong, dig harder, Wong, pull! <sighs> Drive you nuts. But thank goodness for my coach, named Wallace Wong. Because I understand when I write this, this word, hoi a mau, hoi a mau, no ka po no si vila. Hoi a mau, paddle. And it's not easy, and you're not just going to get there right away. It's going to be a while. I don't care how strong or how fast or how hard you're pulling. The canoe will get there when the canoe gets there. Now, very carefully here. <clears throat> when I say ku okoa, this is the signature of the hakumele, me. Somebody picked up on it in a recent uh, article that came on social media, and they said exactly what I was saying in the mele. So I was pleasantly surprised, but at the same time, I know that they were taking a dig because they were speaking about the political advocacy of this mele. Ku okoa means independence. But when I say independence, I mean several different layers of independence. I can talk about political independence, but at the core of it, there is no political independence unless we are independently minded. Yeah? The independence of our minds and our hearts to be freed from 
certain kinds of teachings that hampered our kupuna in the generations before, that taught our people to be ashamed of who we were, who they were, that taught our elders to shun and be, af be afraid to speak our language, that taught our people it was bad, and by doing so, robbing us of our identity. Now in today's time, we have every opportunity to continue the shift of the tide. The leadership that's coming from Mauna Kea right now represents that. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions? Okay. I'm going to run through the song. All of you have heard the song, I take it. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to do two, two uh, Leo. Leo Kane and Leo Wahine. Leo Kane, you will be in the lower register. Kaiko o kamoana. And Leo Wahine, come in on the octave above. Kai ko o ka mo wa na ka i la na nei Hawaii i na we we a lulu ka ho nu a ume a na kulu kulu e ka la ni ki e ki e ka mai luna. Awe ke aloha ole akamalihini pea leo wahine. Kai ko kamo. Okay, um, that's your that's your leo. I need you to just sing out. Yeah, I'm physically challenged to sing that uh, in leo wahine. Like I said, modern technology doesn't solve everything. <laughs> you would have thought that they had some kind of pill or something for that, but I guess not. Huh. Here we go. Sit up, please. If you think that you should sing a song that I wrote, especially if it's one of my Mele Aloha Aina, you will not sing my song unless you're going to follow. Oh, I, oh I, I failed to tell you the chorus, yeah? Let me start with the last line of the chorus. No kuulahui eha avi pau ayola mau. For my nation, my people, I will give my all. Why I gonna give my all? In order for our next generations to endure and to thrive. Not just survive, but to thrive. We don't want them to just make it over there. We want them to make it there and be well. So makua, if you're not willing to put yourself out there, and just sing out like you never ever sang anything before. And I don't care if you feel like you have a junk voice. Listen to my voice. As someone who is mahu and someone who used to feel intimidated because everybody's going to look at me and be like, oh, yeah, we know, we got you. I am no longer held back by the incongruence, I love it, mahalo kiali iwahine pauwahi for my English classes. <laughs> my vocabulary is lovely. <laughs> ah, ah. Incongruence, my voice is incongruent with the rest of me, but that's okay, because you know I'm gonna use my voice to the fullest capacity. So if I have no hangups, you should have no hangups. Sit up, please. Kaiko o kamoana, kailana nei Hawaii, na we we a lulu kahonu a ume a na kulu kulu e kalani. Okay, hold on. Leo wahine. You know when you get mad at your kids. <clears throat> Hema! <laughs> Hema! Na wai lai walau ya oe, hele oe, hana kera ano hana? Ah, loha no ka hoi! Right? Or what, whatever mothers do, you know when it's... <laughs> hey! Did I just tell you to talk over there and do all this kind of thing? Right? Think about it. You fooling yourself. Not fooling me. You fooling yourself. 
if you tell me that you can't deliver the leo more forward than that. Hello. Here we go. Kai ko o ka mo wa na kai la na ne hawaii na we we a lulu ka o nu a a ha me a na kulu kulu e kala ni ki e ki e ka mai luna. Awe ke aloha ole akamalihini Ku haaheo e ku uhawai'i Mama kakawa o ku uaina o ke huka kahiaka O na o iwi o Hawaii nei no ku ulahui e ha avi pau ai olamau. Okay, listening up. Ho o pili mai ku ha aheo e ku Hawaii ma makakaua o ku uaina o ke ehu kakahiaka o na o iwi. O Hawaii nei, no kuulahui, no kuulahui. e ha avi pau, e ai ola mau. mau. All right. Make sure that we pronounce the name that covers all of the pai aina to the rest of the world. You might find yourself using it with a softer W. You might find yourself using it with a more pronounced V sound. The word is Hawaii. Olelo mai Hawaii. Hanaho Hawaii. Some of you, if you use a more pronounced V sound, it should come out as Hawaii. Olelo mai Vai. Wai. Hawaii. Hawaii. Please do not give me anything less than that. If you singing and kind of eh, on Hawaii, I never teach you this song and no sing my song. Period. That's it. Don't. Love, love, kiss, kiss. I'm mm. not <laughs> singing my song. I don't like Makua, be not afraid of acquiring our language. We know who to blame. Yeah, yeah, you guys, all you guys who never teach us our language, yeah, because you were scared of it. Yeah, okay, bless. Kapu aloha. Hi, mahalo. The word is Hawaii. You will hear me say Hawaii. Olelo mai Hawaii. Ku haaheo e ku u Hawaii. Okay. I tend in my compositions I tend to give a note to each vowel. And I tend to avoid unless the song avails itself, I tend to avoid vowel clusters. A vowel cluster is simple. Wai. Olelo mai. Wai. Wai. We say Hawaii. Ha. Wai. E. That's, that's one of those clusters right there. Olelo mai. Hawaii. Hawaii. But I sing it. Hawaii. E. Ha. Ola, ha. Ha. Wa. Wa. E. 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 Hawaii. Hawaii. Because I want people to. I want you to make sure that you, have, you created that extra sound because sometimes it doesn't come out right. Like in my new mele, uh, I'm a E o Hawaii ku aina aloha. That's my signature. The people that sing my song differently, I know I never teach them. But tonight I'm teaching you guys. So can you guys please reflect that? Thank you very much. And the same for aina. The word, when we say it in spoken rhythm, we say oku aina. But when we sing it, I want to make sure 
that when I taught you, it's aina, rather than aina. Otherwise, it would have. Where's the pen for this? Um, do we have a pen? Okay. When you sing, music allows us to do certain things. So the okina a ko, the kahako over the a. That means we do what to it? We elongate it. Mahalo. Aina. It's not aina. I didn't write aina. Aina. I wrote aina. See, music wise, it is okay to hold it up. Ku'u aina. As long as I don't break the air to create an okina sound. Everybody kind of following me? Okay, mahalo. That's why you hear me sing, Ko ha'aheo, e ku'u hawaii, ma makakaua, o ku'u aina. It's because I'm giving, I'm giving that uh, kahako value of time to sing the ah. Everybody got that? It's, part, it's music. People who know music know what that is. People who don't know music feel that because the word is aina, that's another vowel cluster, aina. I don't care to sing on vowel clusters too much. So, hanaho. Ku ha'aheo e ku'u hawaii ma makakaua o ku'u aina o kehu ka kahiaka o na o iwi o hawaii nei no ku'u lahui e ha'avi pau Aiolamau. Okay, and that last line, I wrote Aiolamau. Kumu hai lama. Mahalo ya oi no ko no ho anamai iloko ke lumine. Would you care to offer any, uh, any thoughts on the slight differentiation when I wrote in? I wrote Aiolamau. I didn't write it Aiolamau like how some people sing. I wrote it a i o la mau. What is, do you have an articulation for our ohana here tonight on this last line? No kuula hui e ha avi pau a i o la mau. Well, kahi manao is that, well, the, the one thing is we talk about the continuation from what is established before that it hasn't ended. Um, so, Kiola Mao, that it's been established before and yeah. will continue. So, it's a very positive look to say, rather than to say, we're going to start up now. Right. Ah, eh, And it will live. Yeah. But it has, it, it lived then, it's now, and it will live on. <coughs> so, that's why, remember, you had the horse come teach you tonight. <laughs> Just go get the the puwa. Ah, uh, the popoki. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalo kumu. That was excellent. So yes, this is a continuum. We are on a continuum. So let's acknowledge that. Aohe avale oko pu alikoa. Okay, wait, hold on. Can, um, sisters in the audience, you gotta kind of titter it out and just rah! You know? Wait, wait. Papa! Sit there at the papa! Aohe avale oko pu alikoa. Okay, ave me ko kamala la valula me ka kuhi heva alu mai pu alu mai 
me koma no kala ni po ka i mai ana me na ka ma aka helela ni ku ha a he o e ku ha va okay hold on wait whoever is singing the lead you hold them out that's another signature on the melody that I compose. The kaho ahoa. Ku ha a he o. And I'm going to hold them out until your pow echo, and then I'm going to breathe quickly and come back in with the next line. Why? Because just like, just like the lines, you think you should take my people away? You think that you should come for my kupuna people? who are willing to express themselves, and you think that only go get one line, ah, ole, think again. There will be another line, and another line, and another line, and it's going to be unbroken. Right? You all saw the video, right? No, 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 but can, can. Okay, can, can. Can, can. That's why I go Victoria's Secret by Good Brown. Because can. Support. Um, you cannot hit the note unless you get air. So you have to. And fill your diaphragm with air. <clears throat> if I take it to to um, in my vocal range at the higher end of my voice. Ko ha he o e ku hawaii 
Mama kakaua o kuu aina. And I can fill the room with sound. If you sing my song and you have a goal that you yourself are representative of the, the four, the 40, the 400, the 4,000 of your kupuna behind you. And when we stand and we look at obstacles in front of us, Mama kakaua o kuu aina. Now my voice um, <clears throat> has been pushed a lot. So I can't sustain too much only because my voice is taking a, taking a beating. Yeah, it'll start to get raspy in a little while. So I shouldn't push, push it too much. But my goal is for you to find that inner place within you. The place that it, this is your opportunity. If you know what my mele means, and you know, stand proud, my Hawaii, band of warriors of my land. This is a new dawn for our native people, for our kanaka of this land, for my nation, my people, my culture, my language, my history. I will give my all in order for our legacy to live on. You should not sing this song unless you understand the in intimacies of it now that I have come to you. But knowing that your parents of Halau Kumana, you're down. <laughs> you wouldn't send your children to Halau Kumana if you weren't down, now would you? <laughs> right. <clears throat> but I just sing for the purpose of saying. Kuhaaheo <laughs> ready. So think, you choose whether you like be Star Kalahiki or Amy Hanayali. <clears throat> so yeah, 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 just like that. Okay, lift, lift, little bit more. Diaphragm open. Kuhaahe, <laughs> ready? Here we go, Leo Kani. You can take. Uh, let's decide. Take the lead. Ready and. Kuhaahe o, e kuhawai i. Mama kakaua o kuu aina o ke hu ka kahia ka o na o iwi o havai inei no kuu lahu e havi pa ai o lama. Okay, please stand. Please stand. <clears throat> if I have any tenor voices over here. Um, feel free, and if any kane or wahine, if you can harmonize, please feel free to do so, if you can hear it in your ear. I'm only teaching you the melody line. We're not here to learn all kind harmony because we don't have to learn that. Main thing, you know the melody. If you have a tenor voice somewhere in here that, you, that I'm singing too low for you, and because you can hit those Robert Casimiro kind notes, <laughs> Wish I could sing like that. But I'll sing with the voice that I was given. Mahali Kiakua. Here we go. <clears throat> Don't forget. You are the Amy Hanayali'i and the Star Kalahiki. You just hit it. Okay. <clears throat> and where are all my Josh Tatofi people? <laughs> that smooth voice, yeah? But we need. By the way, he and I are um, church members, so the song that we wrote here and Kuha'aheo both were inspired by our church. It's a song in church, so you should know this. Okay, uh, let's take the last verse and then we'll move on and then at the end we'll sing both songs together. Elei mau i lei mau ka koe na ma mo aloha I lay vehi a ali i vehi nani o kuu aina hoi a mau 
no kapon no si a ho i ho i ho i a mai ke ku oko a ku ha a he o e ku u a wa i i ma ma ka ka wa o ku u a i na o ke e hu ka ka hi a ka o na o i vi o ha wa i nei no ku u la hu e ha a vi pa o a i o la ma o ku ha a he o e ku u a wa i i ma ma ka ka wa o ku u a i na o a we. Okay, in my song, remember musically it's okay. When we say i i i leve hi a ali i ve hi nani o ku u aina, we can sing that vowel vowel a e i o u vowel cluster aina, and we can go straight to the aina. I leve hi a ali i ve hi nani o ku u Aina, but in the other area of the song, the reason why it sounds differently is because I need the cadence. Ku ha a he o e ku u ha wa i i ma ma ka ka wa o ku u a i na. It's like who played volleyball in here? Okay, so when you take when you hold the ball. And the follow through, or if you played football, and snap. But um, or even when you um, play basketball, right? Done, done. And your rhythm of the feet have to be, be able to launch you if you're going to go for the the shot. Same thing with this. <coughs> so. Hawaii, there is O ke hu ka kahi aka o na o i vi o Hawaii nei vowel cluster. But the one before that, ku ha a he o e ku u Hawaii, it's because I want to make sure that you give each vowel its value. Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aina. He left today to go to Aina. 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 But you can it. sing it oh. Aina. As long as there's no break. So let's try that again. Ku ha a he o e ku u ha wa i i ma ma ka ka wa o ku u a i na. O ke hu ka ka hi a ka o na o i vi o Hawaii nei no ku u la hu i e ha a vi pau ai o la ma o mai ka ino. Any question? Okay, one minute break. If you need water or or something, if you need to stretch, you gotta go outside and and then come back. One minute, and then we'll hold them over. Or go lua, hele kalumiho paupilikia. Okay, while you're finishing up your muffin or whatever it is you're drinking, does anybody have any question? Anybody have any burning inquiry, burning desire to know something? Yes. Fabulous question. Did you all hear this question? What inspired me? What inspired me? Was my aloha for my haumana? Yes, my love for my kids, because I didn't want my kids to keep going, showing up places, and we go do the same chants and the same things. But those chants didn't necessarily have bearing or relevance upon 
what the, the situation at hand. So when I thought about it, we kept going out for marches, rallies, protests. We went out wherever history was in the making. Even when I took my kids to stand across the street from people protesting at Kauai Ha'o Church because of the, um, the Ivi Kupuna from the cemetery that were removed and that are now under the, the church waiting to be put back because of development. Over 600 plus whole and partial burials. I wanted my students to be present. Watch, listen, see what's going to happen. That way, when my, when my kids grow up, and I say my kids because I, my philosophy is that every kumu should aloha your children like it's our own children. That way you think twice before you do what you do. You know, if we cannot aloha our students as we would our own blood children, something's wrong then go do another job, beat it. That's my philosophy, yeah. Because when our students know that we believe in them and that we will aloha them above and beyond the frailties of being young and uh, you know, all of those things, just growing and learning up, how will they ever believe that we truly acknowledge and believe in their potential for success? It's just like teaching our kids to drive. How old are you? 15. 15. Hey, when I was 15, I had my own car. You get your own car. <laughs> Who you got to see for that? <laughs> okay. When I was 15, I had my own car. But in order for me to have my own car, I already had to have demonstrated that I was responsible. I didn't need to be told what to do. I knew what to do, and I did it. And when I did it, I did it well. I was the one that grew up in my father's house. I had the one who changed my father's bedding and my father's linens. I was the one who washed his clothes. I was the one who washed my grandma's clothes. I was the one who made her food. I was the one who eventually swept and mopped the house. I was the one who made sure that I went with my grandmother every weekend to go do her hair and do the shopping. So when came 15, Thanks. Drive down the road. Bye. Take my grandmother. So with uh, great privilege comes great responsibility. But my parents trusted in my ability to be responsible because I was raised by my grandparents. So there should be no excuse. Yeah? If we baby our children and if we expect this much out of them because because of our own inhibitions, then that's our fault, right? That's why after this, you're leading this song and I'm not gonna sing it all. <clears throat> um, any, uh, did that answer your question? I wrote it in 2007. I wrote it because I wanted my haumana, instead of doing e pele e pele ka u ka uli yana, e pele e pele, that's fine and dandy, when we have to show ourselves. But when we had to have a song, see, that's, that's part of the things that we do. Nothing wrong with doing these things, but there has to be one something in the, in the lesson plan or the lesson book that we call upon that invokes our understanding of the greater issues, not just a demonstration of who we are and our culture. I've noticed that your kumu, um, kumu kavika, he has composed many new mele for you. And all of those mele have something to do with what's going on today. That's fabulous. But anyway, I just didn't want my kids to keep going with the same old material, and that's why I composed this. <clears throat> all right, let's move on. Hebelo maolo aku o hai aloha ikanu o ka leva la nila ai ma 
This song is very, very simple. One verse, chorus, and that's it. I'm thinking of expanding it, but at the same time, I love the fact that it's so simple. Forevermore, let us read together. I didn't make you read the other mele, because you can go read it on your own. What time is it now? Oh, it's uh, 7.51. Okay, we're almost done, yeah? So good timing. <clears throat> you go read on your own the English translation of Mele Kuhaeo. But let us read together this Mele in English. Forevermore, pa. Forevermore shall my beloved flag wave in the highest of the heavens above. May peace and tranquility be upon us always. Behold, Hawaii, my beloved and cherished land. To you, my nation, be fearless. Be true to our heritage as Kanaka. Be steadfast now and always. The essence and life of our land endures evermore in fairness, equity, and justice for our people. That is my interpretation of this song. When you sing this song, once you leave me, it becomes yours to sing. Wherever and wherever you feel appropriate, in whatever manner that you feel will best contribute to what the task is at hand, if it's applicable to what you're doing. <clears throat> um, I'm a bit of a stickler for doing things a certain way. That's so that I know when I go out there, I know who, who I taught. And if they taught somebody else, I know if they kept what I taught. Or did they make their own? For these particular mele, I ask you, keep, keep it to the flavor that it was meant to be sung. Nowadays, when I hear kaulana napua, depending on who's singing it, as sweet as you can sing the song, Kaulana Napua, right? We all know the song. Kaulana Napua, O Hawaii, E Kupa Ama Hope O Kaai, E Na Hiki Mai Ka Elel O Kaloko E No Pala Pala Anu Nu Me Ka Pa Ka. Now it's uh, the tune. We all sing and, and we all come to life when we hear it. But when we listen to the words, I hope everyone knows what those words mean. Because nowadays, in the context of what's going on in our community, I can't sing that song without feeling the, the breadth and the scope of emotions that come with those words. If somebody in your family was saying, here, I'm going to give you all the money, all the money, but you've got you to gotta sacrifice the dignity of your family. What am I asking you to do? If I tell you the land that you live on and all your ancestors buried all on the family property, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you all the money you want. But you can dig up all your family and go dig them all up, every last one of them. And your family's struggling. And, you say, and you, I'm going to give you money. You can go build one brand new house and everything. But the deal is you got to go dig your family. Now, if you make that decision, you make that decision. But it's that kind of thing where you will be forced to sometimes confront every last 
value that you have. Now when you sing my song, just know that you must sing these songs with every last ounce of your, your heart and your being. Sing. And sing like you truly love your child, our people, our community, and our Hawaii. If you cannot or will not, no sing my song. Plain and simple. No, just go sing them. Thanks. Because then you don't know what it means. And if you shame for singing them, see, that's why I've been teaching this song around lately. And see this bun on top of my hair? I'm expressing what I want the world to see. But when I sing, it sort of sings a different expression. Manokia, too bad. It's my natural voice. And I shame. Watch, I'm going to sing louder. Let me sing louder. Why? Because this was written with all the love that I can. I was loved by my kupuna. They accepted me unconditionally, my grandmother. When I reconciled internally my feelings about what I aspired to in this lifetime, and I expressed them, and I was met with rejection. It was my grandmother who came to my house. She drove from Mililani, showed up on my doorstep, and she was talking about the, the family members that went go tell her, hey, you heard about the kind so-and-so. You know what, instead of kind. And she came and said, I don't care what you're going to be in your lifetime, I'm going to love you. You're my mo'opuna. So all that love was put into my mele. You have to know that. And now, if you think that you should sing my mele, you need to sing with that passion and that love. If you don't have that passion and that love for our people, our land, and our culture, maybe you don't know that you sent your kids to Halau Kumana. <laughs> maybe you just thought that you were going to send them to a creative school. <laughs> Please. You sent them to Halau Kumana because you wanted change. You sent them to Halau Kumana because you wanted them ready for the challenges of tomorrow and that you believe that they can have a future in being Kanaka. Not a Kanaka that's limited. They can be Kanaka and learn Japanese, Chinese. I speak more than just English and Hawaiian. And I can be good at it, but it doesn't make me any less Kanaka. <clears throat> Let us... Repeat after me. Ho'opili mai. Evelo mauloa. Ku'u hai aloha. Ikanu'u. Okaleva lanila. Ae maluhia. No na kau a kau. Eo Hawaii. Ku'u aina aloha. E ku'u lahu ie. E vivo ole. Ku kanaka e. Oni pa amau, wa mau kea, o ka aina, i ka pono. Forevermore shall my beloved flag wave in the highest of the heavens above. May peace and tranquility be upon us always. Behold Hawaii, answer Hawaii, my beloved and cherished land. To you, my nation, be fearless, be true to our heritage as Kanaka, be steadfast now and always. So when you sing that line, and you feel the breeze go right through you, or the sun comes out, or even if the rain fell, you know our ancestors heard you. When you call Eo Hawaii, that's all of us. Those who have gone before, those in the, in the now, and those ahead of us. Our generations yet to come. You invoke the mana of, that land, of our land with Eo Hawaii Kuaina Aloha. And you sing. 
please stand. Evelomo loa ready and Evelomo loa ku hai aloha ikanu uoka leva la nila ai maluhi anona kawa kau. E o Hawaii i ku u ai na lo ha e ku la hui e e vivo ole ku kanaka e oni pa ama u u ama ke. Ka aina i ka pono o ama o ke o ka aina i ka pono e velo ma lo a ku hai alo a sing i ka nu o ka leva la ni la. Ai maluhi a nona kaua kau e o Hawaii i kuu ai na loha e kuu lahui e e vivo ole ku kanaka e. Oni pa ama o o ama o ke o ka ai na i ka pono o ama o ke o ka ai na i ka pono e velo ma lo a ku o hai aloha. I kanu uo ka leva la nila ai maluhi a nona kaua kau e o Hawaii ku ai na loha e ku lahui e e vivo. Kanaka e oni pa a mau u a mau ke a o ka ai na i ka pono u a mau ke a o ka ai na i ka pono u a mau. O ka ai na i ka pono Ua ma o ke a o ka ai na i ka pono Mai ka ino, any questions? No question? Okay, please pull our hui together like this, closing the gaps. One last time. All right. When you lead the people, you can either lead with the leo that is unison voice and make the kane sing a little higher, the wahine sing a little lower, or you can do what we were doing and sing uh, lower leo ha ha for the kane and the leo wahine is going to be the octave above. So I leave it now to you and I will join the lahui. <laughs> Wana ko ilana nei Hawaii na oe oe a lulu ka onu a umea na kulu kulu e kalani ki e ki e kauma iluna oe ke aloa ole 
akamalihini kuha heo kuha vai mama ka kawa o ku aina o ke Ka o na o iwi o hawai i nei no ku lau havi pa ai o la ma o he a vale onko pu aliko a o ke a me me ko kamala la malula. Me ka kui hewa alu mai bu alu mai me ko mano kala ni po ka i mai ana me na kama aka hele la ni ku ha e o ku ha he o e ku ha va i i. Mama ka kaua, o ku aina o keu ka kahia ka o na o iwi o hawai i nei no ku lahu e havi pa ai o la ma. Ava ava, e vivo ole a ho o ku pa a a o he ho pe e ho i mai ai a na i vale no ka ko u ka u ko e mau i ke ala a o e ke aloha ole a kamalihini. Ku ha a he o e ku a vai i mama ka kaua ku a he ai o na o i vi o a vai i nei no ku la hui e a vi pa. Ai o la ma o
Kana e oni pa ama o ama ke au ka aina i ka pono o ama ke au ka aina i ka pono e velo ma lo aku Hai aloha, i kanu uoka, leva la nila. Ae maluhi anona, kaua kau, e o Hawaii. E kula hui e, e vivo o le, kukana e, o ni pa amau, u amau ke o ka aina i ka pono, u amau ke o ka aina i ka pono. I ka pono O a mau ke au ka aina I ka pono O a mau ke au ka aina I ka pono No leila E nga ohana o ke ia kula ohala o kumana mai ki kūpuna a ka mākua a ka ōpio. To all those of you in this room tonight, mahalo, 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 mahalo anui ya o kou pakahi a pauloa. Mahalo no keia launa ana no i o kākou, ma keia, keia hale noho i o halau i nana. Mahalo nui, ya oe, e hea la ni wahine no kou leo kono mai ya uhele mai. Mahalo nui ya oe e kumahailama no kou maalama ana i kumaluhia o ke ia wahi nei. Mahalo anui ya oe e san no kou kako o ana ya mama nei. Mahalo anui ya o kou e na ohana. Ho mai ka i aku i ke ia kula o halau kumana. I o mau i kou i noa. Continue to do the work that is being done. Continue to perpetuate the legacy of instilling and of, of pride and a sense of achievement in our next generation. This is what is, it is, this is our future right here and all of our young people. Makua, be fearless. Even when you're not sure, be fearless. Because our children need us. If they don't see what fearless means in us, then you know they're going to look for it elsewhere. So if you like guarantee what kind of fearless they're going to get, then you'll be fearless in what you do. Teach them how to drive the car and then trust them when they get out there to drive it. Drive mom and dad, you just drive them. <laughs> but young people, if you're given the privilege, with privilege comes great kuleana. So take your kuleana seriously. I know you go to a school that teaches you this. Thank you everyone for being here. I am honored and humbled to have been able to spend time with you. And until I see you, whether it's on the Mauna or whether I see you over here. Oh, by the way, get ready. Things are happening in our community. And I mean, seriously, things are happening. Um, and I know that, uh, son, we are planning for a march on October 5th. We trust that you'll all be there ready and prepared. But even before that, if we get a call saying that our community needs to show up and show well, then get ready, because it's coming. But mahalo for having me here tonight. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. mahalo.
mahalo. Malia Uko. Mahalo.